Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and this is Stardust Galaxy Warriors. Not Stardust Galaxy Warriors, although I would love to see a tie-in game for WWE and the character Stardust. Would be a really interesting game. Now this is Stardust Galaxy Warriors, a shmup brawler for $9.99 that comes out on the Steam Store today. It is you piloting a giant metal robot, whether you like to call it a Voltron, a Gundam, a Jaeger from Pacific Rim, and you're protecting the galaxy from the evils within it. Now before I begin these first impressions, I want to make sure you guys know that this key was obtained from the developer for the purposes of critical review. That won't affect my opinion in any way, but you guys should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? Alright, let's get our shmup skills on. Okay, I'm gonna play a little of this campaign mode here. I've got about five to six hours in the game, but before I begin, I wanna show you a little bit of the options menu. Now, this game is a little bit different from everybody else. You've got an options preset of your normal difficulties, easy, normal, and hard, but you have a customization option. You can actually customize the different durabilities and fire rates and drop chances of the ships that you will be fighting and yourself. I can up the fire rate, I can up the enemy durability, and really customize my experience I haven't seen a lot of games do this or do this very well. It, this game does give a lot of options in that. It did say in the store menu that it was able to just hit boxes. That's not here. Um, I'm not sure how that would work very well though, but I like the options here. I will be playing on hard for this first section, but I'll show you a little bit later on what you can do. There's also a lot of graphical options for a game of $10. I can actually see the anti-aliasing options, the shadow options, vertical sync, light shafts, bloom. It'll get those smaller systems and laptops the ability to run this game without any problems. All right, there are four main mechs that you can choose from in this game. The Blue Falcon, Red Tiger, Silver Wolf, and Black Bear. Each of them have their own special abilities. Black Bear has a shield that can protect against bullets. The Blue Falcon has a tracking spear that can mark enemies, which is rather nice for more damage. Red Tiger is more of a melee guy. He's got some claws that can tear through armor. And then the Silver Wolf, which can dodge. All right, you've got two selections you need to make, your primary weapon and your secondary weapon, and each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses, which is one of the strengths of this game. For example, in primary weapon, my pulse rifle, very good against single targets and very accurate, but weak against groups. Plasma shotgun, great against close range, but spreads too much for be effective at far range. Chain gun, very good for damage output, but it's short range. I'm gonna use the pulse emitter for this run in particular, but there are seven different weapons. Then there's a secondary weapon. You got homing missiles, which obviously, well, homing missiles. Grenade launcher, good for area of effect attacks, but also is very tricky to use. Needle projector, constant stream of needles. And I'm gonna use the grenade launcher for this run. All right, let's finally get into some action. All right, so we're gonna play a little bit of the third level here at this point. And the first thing you probably notice is the aesthetic. The aesthetic at times can be pretty beautiful, in particular with some of the water effects and some of the different environments that they throw at you. You'll notice the backdrops in this game a lot. Even with it being more generic, it does come over as a strong aesthetic overall. Now this game is a shoot 'em up and as you see here, there can be a lot of enemies on screen at once. Now I've got my primary weapon, the pulse rifle, the secondary weapon as you saw with the pink grenade there, and then the melee attacks. Now, your character is under the RPG elements of the game. Basically, the amount of damage, as you see by those numbers there, will go up depending on what upgrades you choose at the end of each stage. So you can upgrade your firepower, you can upgrade your defensive powers, so on and so forth. Or you can get a little bit more out of the power-ups that you can collect. So for example here, I'm guaranteed critical hits. Yes, there are critical hits in this game, and they can do triple or even double damage at this point. I also have a distortion attack, as you see with that B button there. That will be specific to the becking question, so I'm gonna use it right there. And that does a howl for me, dealing damage in that sort of circle area. It can clear out a lot of enemies, even mid-size enemies. It will do a little bit of damage against the bosses. Now, one of the greatest things I like about this game is the fact that it is able to do so many different play styles. As you know with the different weapons that I showed you as well as the different mechs, you can really customize the experience that you have. Do you go in for a more you know, frontal assault character which gets in that person's face and may have to get a lot more of armor and shield upgrades in order to be able to be effective? As you see with my character there, the green bar is the armor bar and the blue is the shield bar. 
if my shields deplete, of course I am going to start taking armor damage. No more armor, of course I die. And I have to start the stage over again, not the level, the stage. Each level contains three stages. Now, there is a lot going on on screen at times, as you see here, and there can be interesting elements that play from that. There is a lot going on, but you always seem to be in control, at least at the default levels. What I say default levels? Remember that customization option? I'll show you a little later on how that can affect the game. The challenge the game brings you is that it's not going to throw the exact same enemies at you, you know, one by one. It's going to throw different elements at you, going to throw some bullet hell at you, it's going to throw some more melee enemies at you, it's going to throw, you know, things that you'll have to react to in a very short amount of time, and then it'll throw a boss at you like you see here. So the game keeps you on your toes, and I do like that. Does the gameplay necessarily change over a long period of time? Again, I mentioned, I've played this game about six hours now. I feel like the game, even though it has definitely had some repeat elements to it, it's felt unique. Like for this boss fight, I have to have an emphasis on moving vertically in order to dodge these missiles. The next fight I may have an emphasis on actually staying still and not reacting to the missiles in question. So it does a good job of sort of setting you up for the next section, which is a very good thing. Now, if that doesn't do it for you in terms of what you've seen on screen, well, unfortunately, the game pretty much is what I'm showing you on screen. Of course, there's going to be different elements to it, but it stays relatively the same. Very much like, well, other shoot 'em ups. A lot of shoot 'em ups do have repetitive elements to it, and this is no exception. Now, let's talk about the music. Just listen to this music for a second. Needless to say, the music selection is in this game is probably one of the strongest elements about it. It does have a soundtrack for $5, and anybody who likes this sort of electronica kind of music and this sort of, I don't want to say Galaga-like or, you know, Ikaruga-like, but this sort of, you know, high-action, high-paced sort of music, this game does wonders with the soundtrack in almost every way. So I definitely say one of the strongest elements is its music. What are some of the downsides of the game? Well... Like, boss fights, for example, can be boring at times. As you see here, nothing has really changed in this boss fight. It's the same pattern over and over again. And while I do like some repetition in terms of learning elements, I felt like some bosses were way too repetitive, unfortunately, which unfortunately does some damage over the game over the long haul. Remember how this game doesn't take itself seriously, at least what I said? Yeah, you're fighting a giant disco ball. Of course it's not taking itself too seriously. Now I'm playing as Black Bear, which is more of a defensive specialist, and I'm using the flamethrower and the needle projector to show you a little bit of the different gameplay. Obviously with the flamethrower here, I can't get anywhere close to the disco ball, so it may not have been the greatest of choice for this level. The needle gun, on the other hand, can, can do consistent damage, and considering that it's always taking up so much of the screen, it does do the job. Black, Black Bear's shield ability helps me get close so I can do some damage with the flamethrower. Now, what's interesting is that the game does a good job, as you see I sort of failed there, in the co-op element as well. In terms of the Black Bear, for example, he's not very good by himself, actually. The shield ability actually still hits his shield, so it's sort of useless for him, even though it, I think it does dampen the damage in question, but it's very good for keeping other characters protected and you just sort of, you know, tanking damage like you see in an MMORPG. Now, Co-op-wise, I do I did have some footage. Unfortunately, I got corrupted. I do thank my sister for helping me on that. Co-op is interesting because it does sort of cause some more chaos because there's not as much room to maneuver on screen. It's not like you run into each other, but it's just the fact that you are trying to stay away from each other just because you don't want to both take all the damage in question. And so if one guy goes down, you have to run over, try to revive them with the Y button on the controller. Speaking of a controller, controls are relatively good for this game. The only thing I really have an annoyance on is that there are certain stick-based skills with the controller in question, so like I can throw a spear with the blue falcon. I wish that it would be bound to the right stick, but instead it's bound to the movement stick as well as hitting the X button. I just feel like it could have it missed an opportunity to simplify the controls there and make it a little bit easier for people. The game is able to keep things fresh for a while. Now, at the six hour mark, I have to say, 
it is starting to wear down a little bit, even though I'm still going through the campaign. However, here's the thing. It's a $10 game and you're getting your money's worth in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the customization options here. I have a preset option of really insane, which is basically upping durability, fire rate, drop chance, having power up stack, so on and so forth. A lot should be going on at screen. I did this to test the performance in a lot of ways, and I ha I'm happy to say the performance does relatively well. What I mean relatively well is that it doesn't seem to really matter how much is on screen or what's going on in terms of the amount of enemies and lasers on screen, which is nice. It runs at a 60 FPS there. Now, with that said, there seems to be certain conditions that the game runs into. Like uh, there's a certain level that I noticed that there was some problems in terms of execution of that frame rate. It would drop to 40 or 50 consistently and that did cause some problems over time. Unfortunately, that is noticeable in a game like this, but that was a rare occurrence. Most of the time the game ran almost fantastic at this point, and I am putting this on the highest settings in question. So there is some give and take there. I could have moved it down to a lower level. As you see here, there's a lot of projectiles on screen, and almost to the fact that it almost breaks the balance of the game with the homing missiles there. But on the flip side, there's a lot more things to dodge. It can definitely up the challenge, and I really appreciate that from these developers. Now, does Stardust Galaxy Warriors innovate in its genre? Not really. I do like the customization option, obviously, but it's just sort of messing around with the, the rules of the game. It doesn't necessarily bring anything necessarily new, but it doesn't necessarily have to either. In the end, Stardust Galaxy Warriors is solid in many aspects. If you like what you've seen in the gameplay here so far, you're probably going to love Stardust Galaxy Warriors. It's cheesy, it's got a great music soundtrack as well as just good general gameplay in question that allows you to really mess with different options, different weapon types, different balances. The customization option obviously does allow for a little bit more of a challenge than normal, and honestly, it's great for its $10 price tag. Would I love to see online multiplayer? Of course I would, but I can understand why at the $10 price tag, it's not there. It's t it takes a lot to get those servers and things like that up and running, and honestly, it does do the job in a local, stand um, local gameplay standpoint. All right, this is my opinion on Stardust Galaxy Warriors. Definitely worth a look for shmup fans, and definitely worth a look for local co-op shmup fans. All right, I will leave my Steam review in this description below. If you did like this review, please give that an upvote. It helps in terms of visibility. If you didn't like this review, it would be great if you could give me some feedback why so I can work on that and change it up a little bit and, you know, obviously become better as a content creator. If you like this video, hit that like button, share it with a friend. It always helps out. Subscribe if you want more content like this, and I will see you all later. In the meanwhile, I'll probably still be trying to defeat the disco ball in question, or at least what's beyond the disco ball. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this content and want to see more of it, you may want to hit that subscribe button on the left hand side. If you like this video and want to see more of this content, take a look at this video on the left hand side as well. And if you missed my last video, take a look at the right hand side. Once again, thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.